things for sure. I won't be talking about money or finances today. Today I want to talk about the joy of learning and sharing your learning with others. That's something I learned growing up and through my professional career. And I want to share that with all of you today. There's a lot of very exciting things happening in the deaf community. We have deaf doctors, deaf lawyers, 300 deaf lawyers, deaf PhD students, deaf certified public accountants, deaf teachers, deaf principals, deaf superintendents. A lot's happening. But if you look back 20 years till now, there's a lot of progress and a lot of successful progress. Yet, there's a lot of challenges in the deaf community. First, deaf education system. If you look around, you notice a lot of the deaf schools are closing, and more deaf children are being put into mainstream programs at public schools. And also, those children are typically the only deaf students in the school. Yeah, there's a few that are bigger schools that have more deaf children, but, but is it the best school for these children? Is the edu- if you look at the educational system, the traditional education system, you know, are they preparing people for the real world? There's a lot of emphasis on the multiple choice tests and standardized testing. But will that really help with meeting real world challenges? The emphasis on multiple choice tests, are they really going to help you after graduation? And another part of this in the deaf community is something I call the island of knowledge. Where some person might study law, another person might study accounting, another person might study education, another person might study science. You know, all of them, it's perfectly great, but I don't see them ever meshing or working together. Where's the connection to the person that's studying law, to the person who's studying science or education? You don't really see that happening. What I see is a lot of challenges. And what can we do to solve those challenges from here on? So how do we see those challenges in our perspective in society today? A long time ago, when we were working, everybody would focus on one skill, and that was enough. But now, knowledge in one skill, it's not anymore. I got to see the vice president of Cisco during an interview. He was the vice president of talent management, and he'd go around and try to hire people that could work with Cisco. And he said, High school graduates and college graduates are not ready for the world today. Are not ready for global society. Maybe they have knowledge in one area. Yeah. But it's not enough still. You have to have knowledge plus other things. You need to know a lot about one area, but you also need to have critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, collaborative skills, the ability to work together and share ideas, and a global perspective. That's what the VP of Cisco said. Now multiply him and his position with everybody around the world in the same position who are also hiring people and looking for new people to work with their company and multiply them all together, and they're all screaming for this kind of worker who has the knowledge plus all these other skills. And now the educational system is not not meeting that demand. There's an emphasis on all these testing, but now it's not meeting the demand of the world. So what can we do about that to make it 
our skills satisfy enough. So I grew up on a college campus, and that was a big impact on my perspective and how I learned. The reason for the college campus was because my father was a professor there. His friends and co-workers all had different areas of study, like religion, psychology, Spanish, science, politics, a large variety. And on campus I could pick, you know, different classes to go to and try little things and compile all these ideas inside myself and make something I called the portfolio of ideas. And there's so many wonderful ideas. But what I found that was more important to me, yes the ideas were important, but how I could take those ideas and apply them to the world. Ideas are good, but without application, it's nothing. If you apply them to the world, you can see what's possible. Some ideas will be successful, some ideas won't, and that's fine. But if you apply them, you can see what happens. So this part of the lecture, I wanted to share with you a model of what's possible for the deaf community. And the model is sort of promoting a continued learning of knowledge throughout the deaf community. And something I call intelligence entrepreneurship, or IE for short. IE actually started here at UT. And they had a lot of great ideas here. <laughs> so the idea behind intelligent entrepreneurship is that it focuses on the development of a skill or expert knowledge in one area. It's a development that I call unique intelligence capital. Something that I call that. For entrepreneurship, a lot of people associate it with the word business, or development of ideas and process of developing a business, but it's not really. It's more process of innovation. Any, in, it happens in any setting, in politics, school, economics, anything. Now, unique intelligence capital and intelligent entrepreneurship connected make a new way of learning or a new way of a knowledge explosion. And I can see a lot of possibilities for that. You know, a few days ago it actually came up where um, a teacher from a deaf school contacted me. And I could tell he had some sort of knowledge and financial background. And he said he wanted to teach and establish a financial literacy curriculum where he could better teach deaf students about money and a lot of that type of information. And I thought that was a great idea for that curriculum. And his vision was to teach the curriculum at the school and then when it became successful, license it to other programs for them to follow. And so that it wouldn't just be in that one place. And that's an that example of intelligence entrepreneurship, where he's really building a new way to teach at this one deaf school, and then it could spread out. It's not only for residential schools. It would be online, and it would be videoed, so mainstream students can also learn about that. You learn about a lot of possibilities. So, intelligence entrepreneurship, it sounds very general and vague and almost abstract, but it's a really good model. Now, why would this be successful for the deaf community? There's three reasons of why it could possibly be successful. So we all know that the deaf community is very small. <laughs> you know, we always know the same people. We're always saying, it's such a small world. How many times have you said that? you have definitely said it enough in our lives. So, every person has a unique connection with other people in that community. And 
because it's so small it's very easy to spread knowledge why would you try to keep that to yourself it's important to spread the information and see what happens in the small community that's the first reason now the second reason is because of the internet and how easily available it is when I grew up in the 1980s we didn't have the internet in 1993-1994 when I was a college student that's when it showed up and that's when I became addicted and super engrossed in the internet I remember my parents would have to always remind me to come down for dinner um, the internet's a simple process of how to get connected to important knowledge or there other information out there Young deaf kids are so technologically savvy. I call them the net generation. Because they're always texting all day and all night on the internet, on IM. They're definitely well wired. <laughs> now, imagine what would happen if we are more connected to sharing on the internet. Now, the last one is video. We use video for a when working with ASL all the time. Now, we can really take advantage of the teachers who want to share their information and share their knowledge with us, like political science or religion. We get to watch that now on the internet. It's offered. But I want to share some examples of this whole process really working. So, TED.com. How many of you guys have seen TED.com? A lot of you, good. Now, Ted started a long time ago in 1984. Now, when Ted first started, it was a very limited group of people who knew about it. Now, fast forward to 2006, it, information finally spread more about Ted. And they used only a simple tactic. They posted about the videos and the lectures online. And suddenly, it became worldwide knowledge, Ted. They were the 20-minute videos in 2006. And then they had 100 million people that viewing the website. Now, closed captioning didn't really happen for another two years. And it was... Closed captions were going through open trans translator program and they were also used for not only deaf people but people from other countries with foreign languages and there's a lot of different languages that use it but people who would post the captions were all volunteers so in 2006 when they posted the videos they had a lot of tra uh, traffic to the website for TED but when closed captions came even more traffic happened <laughs> now Imagine sharing um, things on the internet, it would happen so quickly. Another example would be at MIT. It's a university in Boston. It's really tough to get in. Only about 10% that apply actually get accepted. When you do get accepted though, it's super expensive. About $53,000 to go for one year. For an MIT education. <laughs> now, Back in 2001, they established something called Open Courseware. Oh, one person knows. Good. <laughs> so, Open Courseware. What is that? Professors, faculty, staff would post content, notes, ideas on this website. And there's no need to register. It was free for anybody to uh, to use. Now, fast forward now, it's so popular. It has about 1,900 posts for courses on it now. 90% of faculty are involved in this process. So, it's really great how willing and open they are to share their ideas. example would be a high school in San Diego. It's called High Tech High or HTH, High Tech High. 
it's a new kind of high school. It's very interesting. They don't emphasize tests the way that other high schools do. The goal is to get children prepared for the real world and global society. So they have children set up a portfolio of their ideas and projects, and it's digital, everything's online and web-based. And they can put lectures, ideas, anything they want in there. Then their junior year, they sign up for an internship. And that way they work in a specialized skill, but also still work with academics. And they blend them together. Traditional school systems separate work and academics, but this school decided to blend them together. So that happens for one year. And then the senior year, you work on a senior project. That's something that you're interested in. It can be anything that's interesting. After you're through with that, you are public. You publish that on a website, and then it's free for anybody in the public to see your work. The people who were the driving forces behind the development of the school are business and community leaders. They worked together to develop this high school, and it's been going since 2001, and it's extremely successful so far which you can tell by seeing where all the students who have graduated have gone to college. It's a long list of Ivy Leagues, like Stanford University. 100% of the graduates go on to go to college, which is super impressive too. And they're all good test takers. So test taking skill isn't always what's super important. Now I really want to talk about the Intelligence and Entrepreneurship Program here at UT. Yes, IE is very interesting, but I want to know more about the students who are taking the program here and who they are. So many are first generation college students, which means that they're the first in their family to go to college. Many are also in different cultural groups. I can see the clear desire to develop your unique intellectual and it's not exclusive. And also people give back to the community. You can see all the possibilities here. You see kind of society, their children and Adults also, but the goal is for like a different type of principle for society. And learning never stops. Learning doesn't only happen in a classroom, it happens all worldwide, outside of classrooms. It happens in coffee houses, it happens in the streets, it happens online in virtual reality. And learning is open to everyone. There's no limit of a specific group of people that get to learn. Everyone can learn. And there's always new kind of learning providers. Must you use the traditional educational system? Or can you use something like the high-tech high school? There's all these new ideas that you can take in and see in the community is small for deaf people, but really it's a benefit that it's so small because you can get all this critical information, now these ideas to share. So thank you very much.